the Privy Council. Officially, His Majesty's King Charles' most honorable formal body of advisors to the Sovereign of the United Kingdom and is the highest court of appeal for many Commonwealth countries. Among Caribbean nationals, it is almost impossible to win an argument on whether or not the Privy Council should be replaced by a regional court as the final court of appeal for many Caribbean citizens. In this presentation, we'll look at what the Privy Council is or even the extent this seemingly omissions council has on the lives of millions of Caribbean citizens. While we periodically hear details related to the highest judicial court for many Caribbean nations, many of us fail to understand just how sweeping the powers are within the Privy Council and its impact on these Caribbean countries. We will roll back the curtains and unveil many of the aspects related to the Privy Council and its possible replacement the Caribbean Court of Justice as we answer, what is the Privy Council and how does it affect the people of the Caribbean? Please like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for our future videos. The full name of the Privy Council is the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council and it is the highest court of appeal for many Commonwealth countries, as well as the United Kingdom its overseas territories, crown dependencies, and military sovereign base areas. Established in 1833, the Privy Council was formed to hear appeals in civil matters and is the court of last resort for the entire British Empire other than for the United Kingdom itself. The Judicial Committee consists of senior judges who are called Privy Councillors and they are predominantly justices of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom and senior judges from the Commonwealth of Nations, that is, former colonies of the United Kingdom. The panel of judges, typically five in number, hear a particular case, then report their decision. The roles and jurisdictions of the Privy Council are expansive and it is impossible to cover all in a brief format. However, the Council has main duties which include formally advises the sovereign on the exercise of the royal prerogative and as a body corporate, as king in council, it issues executive instruments known as orders in council, which, among other powers, enact acts of parliament. The council also holds the delegated authority to issue orders of council, mostly used to regulate certain public institutions. The council advises the sovereign on the issuing of royal charters, which are used to grant special status to incorporated bodies and city or borough status to local authorities. Otherwise, the Privy Council's powers have now been largely replaced by its executive committee, the Cabinet of the United Kingdom. Certain judicial functions are also performed by the King in Council, although in practice, its actual work of hearing and deciding upon cases is carried out day to day by the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. The Judicial Committee consists of senior judges appointed as Privy Councillors, predominantly Justices of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom and senior judges from the Commonwealth. The Privy Council formally acted as the High Court of Appeal for the entire British Empire, other than for the United Kingdom itself. It continues to hear judicial appeals from some other independent Commonwealth countries, as well as Crown dependencies and British overseas territories. The Privy Council in Modern Times The number of independent countries that maintain appeals to the Privy Council has been greatly reduced in recent years. If the Caribbean is excluded, there are only four countries where the Privy Council is integrated into the justice system. These are Brunei, Zambia, Mauritius and New Zealand. Moreover, appeals from Brunei are now limited to civil cases and the authorities in New Zealand are now considering whether to retain or abolish the right of appeal to the Privy Council. Many see the Privy Council as a colonial holdover, which still chains many Caribbean countries to British colonial rule. This is not a new criticism. In 1903, a New Zealand judge, Edwards J., counseled the Privy Council against overturning decisions of trained lawyers who have spent their lives in the colony who know and understand its genesis its laws and its customs, as they cannot hope to know and understand them. This is a common argument against the Privy Council, as foreign judges and advocates are much less aware and knowledgeable about the laws in independent countries and the practitioners of those laws. 
This can be seen in the sample of cases that do make it to the Privy Council. The most notable example is probably the case of dancehall star Vibes Cartel, who was arrested and imprisoned for murder in Jamaica in 2014. Vibes Cartel has long argued his innocence and has been fighting his conviction through the court system from the beginning, appealing his conviction all the way to the UK Privy Council, which has taken up the case and is expected to give a ruling in the coming months. Vibes Cartel and his lawyer claim there was evidence tampering during the investigation, which has led to his false imprisonment. Therefore, the Privy Council, which is based in the UK and has no input in the making of Jamaica's laws, has the right to review the case and the power to overturn his conviction in the matter. Why not abolish the Privy Council? With all the feedback and pressure to change the Privy Council as the last Court of Appeal, one wonders why so many Caribbean countries maintain the supremacy of the court. Well, one reason is that the process for abolishing the right of appeal to the Privy Council is not as straightforward as one would expect. In Ibraleb v. The Queen, a landmark case established in 1964, the Privy Council ruled that legislation creating independence did not extinguish the prerogative right to hear appeals existing before independence. In other words, Gaining independence does not automatically remove the jurisdiction of the highest court of the legal system. Leaving the Privy Council requires amending the Constitution, and this has been seen when on various occasions, for example, when the independent Jamaica Council for Human Rights was blocked from moving an appeal to the Caribbean Court of Justice, the highest court of appeal for many Caribbean countries. The process of amending the Constitution is sometimes complex, and varies from country to country. For example, Jamaica's constitution creates the right of appeal to the Privy Council. To change this would require both houses of the Jamaica legislature to pass an amendment to change this appeal right. In Trinidad, for example, the power to amend the constitution is different and requires an amendment to be supported in its final vote by three quarters of the House of Representatives and by two thirds of the Senate, not just by a majority, as is the case in Jamaica. In several other countries, the process of constitutional amendments involves a parliamentary vote plus a referendum to the people who must support the amendment by not less than two-thirds of the turnout. For instance, in the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So, as you can see, even if there was a desire to remove the Privy Council, the process to do so is a difficult journey. Let's now take a look at the establishment of the Caribbean Court of Justice. In 2005, as an alternative to the Privy Council in the United Kingdom, the Caribbean Court of Justice, or CCJ, was set up in Trinidad. It was developed to have two jurisdictions. The original jurisdiction is to interpret and apply laws relating to the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, which established the Caribbean Community, or CARICOM. The second jurisdiction is appellate, meaning that the court hears appeals from lower courts and was established to be the court of last resort in both civil and criminal cases from those member states that no longer allow appeals to the Privy Council. Some Caribbean countries have taken on this second jurisdiction on the CCJ. Always a leader, Barbados and Guyana were the first to accept the CCJ's appellate jurisdiction in 2005. Belize followed in 2010 and Dominica in 2015. Some other countries, however, have not gone down this route. In 2019, St. Vincent and the Grenadines voted on a new constitution to join the CCJ, but the referendum failed due to low voter turnout, which did not satisfy the two-thirds requirement. In 2015, the Jamaican House of Representatives voted for the CCJ, but it did not pass. And most recently, in 2018, the Prime Ministers of Grenada and Antigua and Barbuda campaigned to join the CCJ, but the voter turnout on the referendum vote was too low for it to pass constitutional rigor. What will the future yield? The question of the Privy Council being abolished and replaced by the CCJ is less a question of if and more a question of when. When the CCJ will overtake the Privy Council, however, is difficult to predict. Though it is acknowledged that countries in the region are moving towards an independent judicial system, 
free from the colonial ties to its past, given the difficulty in changing various countries' constitutions, it may be much longer until all the countries in the Caribbean appoint the Caribbean Court of Justice as the final Court of Appeal for the region. Check out this video on who really controls the Caribbean. The Caribbean governments explained. Tell us in the comments section below, do you think the Privy Council should stand as is? Do you support a pivot to the Caribbean Court of Justice? We would love to hear your views in the comments below. As always, we would like to thank you for watching and remind you to please like, subscribe and share our channel with others and turn on the notification bell for our next video as we explore the Caribbean together. This is Jairi Caribbean.